The Z9K, Sony's flagship 8K mini LED TV, brings together all the very best tech that Sony offers. But with the 85 inch model coming in at a whopping nine and a half grand, is 8K worth it? Or is this simply a glimpse into the future of TV? Hey guys, Louis here from Smart Home Sounds and wow, do I have a lot of thoughts to share with you about this TV. The Z9K is without a doubt one of the best TVs that we have ever seen and I might have fallen a little bit in love with it this week. But 8K is still far from mainstream and far from affordable for the majority of us, so where do I see this TV having a place this year? Well, first things first, this is one of Sony's first mini LED TVs, joined by its 4K counterpart, the X95K, which I will come back to later in the video. It sits right at the top of Sony's range with the highest price tags and is the best LCD TV they've created to date. In my eyes, it sits right next to the A95, K Sony's first QD OLED TV and flagship OLED model this year, which again, I'll be revisiting a little bit later on. This model is only available in 75 inch and 85 inch, so it's 100% for those of you guys looking for a larger screen size who have a large room to match that. Now, while prices do fluctuate a lot, so be sure to check the links below for the most up-to-date pricing, I do want to put this TV into context. So the current pricing as of November 2022 is £7,499 for the 75 inch model that we've got here and £9,499 for the 85 inch model. This is the upgrade from the 8K Sony ZH8 TV, but steps up considerably with the shift to mini LED. For those not aware, mini LED models are an evolution of conventional LEDs where the LEDs are a lot smaller and there's more of them packed together. This offers a considerable step up in performance as there are now much smaller dimming zones and we get an overall brighter backlight for a brighter picture. As there are so many more LEDs, you do need something to help combat the brightness and keep a tight control over blooming. And that that's where Sony have added something called Backlight Master Drive to offer a more precise control over the picture. Now before I get into how it's performed in our testing, I do just want to take a moment to appreciate the beauty of this TV. I think all of Sony's 2022 TVs this year are very visually appealing and it's the slim metal bezel that makes this model feel so premium. We've got three stand options, you can have it sat flat on your furniture, bring the legs narrower to accommodate a smaller TV stand or you can raise it up into soundbar mode. Now you do also have the option to wall mount this TV should you wish but you will need to be a little careful whilst doing so as it weighs around 60 kilos and it isn't the thinnest of models either so it will sit a few inches off the wall. Just something to bear in mind. We also get the new Sony Premium Backlit Remote, which is a lot more compact than previous versions. If you're a fan of numbered remotes, don't worry, you get one in the box too. An extra thing worth pointing out is this little camera on top here. Don't worry, it's not filming you, but this is something new Sony are introducing this year. I think it's still due a few updates, but this camera can help to improve performance by adjusting the brightness depending on your environment, or directing the audio to where you're sat. And from our testing, this actually works quite well. I think that other uses like gesture control and webcam either will appeal to you or it won't, but the tweaks it can make to performance are pretty handy. So if we move around now and take a look at the connections on the back of the TV, we've got Bluetooth, we've got Wi-Fi, and a mini plug analog, which also acts as an S center speaker, along with a number of other useful connections that we've listed on screen for you guys now. We've also got binding post here, which means you could use this TV as a center channel in a home audio setup. In terms of HDMI connections, we've got HDMI 1, which supports 4K up to 60 Hertz, HDMI 2 also supports 4K but up to 120 Hz and also supports VRR and ALLM. HDMI 3 is the same as HDMI 2 but also supports EARC and then HDMI 4 supports 8K at 60 Hz or 4K at 120 Hz but there's no support for VRR or ALLM. So anyone connecting a next-gen gaming console will want to connect via HDMI 2 or 3. HDMI 4 is the only port that will accept an 8K signal, though the others will allow content to be upscaled. From our testing, we've been testing this TV with 4K content upscaled, which is how I imagine the vast majority of you guys will be using it. Now, there's currently not a lot of 8K content available at the moment, and it's definitely not mainstream. We found Sony's own 8K YouTube video of their new Alpha A75 camera, but the TV wouldn't play the content in 8K from the YouTube app natively. Instead, you have to connect via a PC capable of outputting 8K 
through HDMI. The only way to get proper 8K now is through the HDMI or in the future if there is satellite 8K broadcast. I think Sony's focused more on the upscaling of 4K and 1080p content, which actually brings us nicely into our testing segment. Now, if you've watched our channel before, you guys know that we try not to get too bogged down in the nitty gritty of specs and numbers. There are other channels out there that do a very good job of that. But instead, we like to offer you guys more of a real world test. So we've been testing this TV out over the last few weeks with a wide variety of content, including a lot of movies and gaming. And I know, tough job, isn't it? But what have we found? Well, as I said at the start, this is without a doubt the most blown away we've been by a TV. It might be the large screen size having an impact too, but we've got the 75 inch here and I've been completely mesmerized by this TV. It's the sort of model that's had me coming into the office and dragging everyone into our filming studio and showroom to come and have a look. Now, the first thing that you notice is the brightness. It's an incredibly bright TV. The peak brightness is expected to be at 2000 to 4000 nits and everything we've watched has offered brightness levels I've simply not seen on a Sony TV before. Even though we've been testing with 4K content upscaled, it's still been very impressive to watch. I think it does a good job of retaining the detail in the brighter areas and the details. The details are what makes this TV mwah. At times, content almost looks 3D and the detail both in the bright areas and the dark areas keep you immersed in your content. All right then guys, so rather than just take our word for it and us showing you some nice B-roll, we wanna actually take you a little bit closer and hopefully we can justify what we mean uh, when we're talking about the level of detail and the textures. So we've just paused the scene here from the film Luca. Um, first of all, very obvious, the depth of field. So the characters are both very much in focus. And then we've got nice roll off into the background, which is nice and soft. Really lovely depth of field. But I really want to touch on the level of detail and the textures, particularly in his shirt here. Now, Sam actually put this quite well. He said it's almost like you know what that T-shirt feels like, even though it's not real. And I think that's the best way that I can describe it. So hopefully with a couple of these close-up shots, you can really see uh, what we mean by that. Now we were expecting some blooming with this TV, which is just a given with any LCD, especially on pure black images and even more so in a dark room. However, I do think that the backlight master drive is doing a great job as I really haven't noticed much blooming at all. Maybe when you're sat off axis, it's a little bit more noticeable, but it definitely wouldn't be a reason to not buy this TV. And I think it keeps blooming to a minimum on the whole. We've had it in our very dark film studio, which has no natural light. And we've also had it up in our bright light showroom. And I think it adapts well to both environments. In terms of blacks and contrast, it's not quite like OLED, which I was expecting, but it does offer very deep black levels and the overall contrast is great. I think you'd only notice that it could be even better if you had something like the A95K right next to it. Another thing that really stood out for me was the depth of field. Characters really pop off the image. And again, it adds to that 3D feel and lifelike picture. As I said, we've also been testing this out for gaming and it performed really well. The details again really added to the experience and as it's got that Sony XR processor and high refresh rate, it really was very impressive indeed. Now, my only drawback with this model is that due to the large screen size, it's actually harder to take in everything that's going on around you. And I felt like my head was moving all over the place to try and make sure that I wasn't missing out on anything. But this TV is really too big for the space that we're in and I'm sitting a lot closer than I'd like for a 75 inch TV. Now, I think that it's probably a better TV for next gen gaming consoles like a PS5, for example, with the connectivity that it offers. And it's also not currently compatible with G-Sync, which is something to bear in mind. In terms of sound performance, for what TV speakers can be capable of, this TV is really decent. It's got four subwoofers, two mid-range drivers, and four tweeters, and it offers 85 watts of power. It's also got acoustic multi-audio too to help the audio replicate what you're seeing on screen. I mean, the vocals are good, mids are good, and the bass is also good, but for a pretty great TV, good isn't really good enough for me in terms of sound performance. So for anyone with the budget for this TV, I think you're definitely going to want a separate sound system. Whether it's a sound bar or full dedicated Atmos setup, it's going to add the immersion of your viewing experience. If you were to use a Sony audio product with this TV, so the A9, the A3000, A5000 or A7000, then you'd also make use of acoustic center sync, which means that the sound bar or speakers would work in tandem with the TV for a complete audio performance. So how does it compare with other models in Sony's 2022 lineup? Well, 
As mentioned, the other mini LED option would be the X95K, which is the 4K version of this TV, which is only available in 75 inch and 85 inch too. Now for us, the X95K offers fantastic picture quality and as the prices are considerably lower, they might offer better value for money. However, if you think you'd make use of 8K content, then the Z9K would be your better option. The 8K upscaling is also very good on this TV, so I think it will come down to your budget here. Compared with the QD OLED A95K, it's a tough call for me. I've not done a full side-by-side -side comparison yet, but we have been testing both models out a lot lately. Now, one clear differentiator which might make your choice for you is the screen sizes. The A95K is only available in 55 inch and 65 inch. So if you want a larger flagship model, then the Z9K would be a better option. For me, the brightness is obviously considerably better on the mini LED, along with great highlights and those incredible details. And if any TV was going to tempt me away from OLED, then this would be it. But if you're looking for the better option for the blacks, contrast, and overall more cinematic performance, then I think the A95K will be a better solution. And of course, is a more affordable choice too. So as much as I've been really impressed with the performance of this TV, do I think it's a good buy in 2022? Well, firstly, there's really not a lot of 8K content available currently. No streaming services like Netflix or Disney Plus offer any native 8K content. And while you can connect a compatible 8K device via that HDMI 4 port, you've got to find 8K content to watch to make the most of that. Now, I will say that the 8K upscaling is really good, but I'm not sure it's multiple thousands of pounds good. For me, I think we're still a few years away from 8K becoming more mainstream, and therefore I think there are only a few scenarios where you might consider buying this TV, and all of those obviously start with you having the budget in the first place. These scenarios include people who just want the best of the best in TV tech right now, those who like being early adopters of new technology and like being ahead of mainstream, and those of you who want a very bright TV and aren't looking at OLED, and those who are after a TV larger than 65 inch. For the vast majority of us, the price tag automatically takes this TV out of consideration for us right now, but it's still an awesome TV and it's been great this week to experience where the future of TV is going. Not only in terms of 4K versus 8K, but it's going to be really exciting to see where they can push LED and OLED to see which one comes out on top in the years to come. Now, this isn't a TV that's going to be sold in large numbers. It's a luxury option at the end of the day. And truthfully, I've loved living that luxury lifestyle for a few weeks. The Z9K is going to be one of the hardest models yet to forget about when I'm at home watching TV. All I need to do now is just find that spare 10K to get one for myself. But what do you guys think? Does this get you hyped up for the future of TVs or is OLED still king for you? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, then go on, hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Thank you all very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.